Hello, and today we are going to be learning about product sum factoring. This method is used mostly in factoring quadratic trinomials. Alright, so let's get right into it. Product sum factoring will factor a quadratic function, meaning the base function will be ax squared plus bx plus c. We know that it will factor to two binomials, and in each one you'll have, in this case, x, and then plus or minus a constant. In each one, the constants together will multiply to the c factor and add to the b factor, which is the basis of this method. So let's take a look at this one we have here. x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we know that the two numbers must add to 2 and multiply to 1. So let's first look at the factors of 1. That's usually where you start. So we go, what multiplies to 1? 1 times 1, of course. So we look, OK, it works. 1 plus 1, draw out the addition, and that equals 2. So now, we can jump right in and write it down. Two binomials, each of them is x plus 1. In this case, we know that you could just put those together and make it x plus 1 squared, but I left it expanded just, just for the sake of the video. Alright, so now let's get back to what we know about product sum factoring. We know it factors to two binomials. Let's just call them x plus e and x plus f in this case. So e and f would represent those constants at the end that I was talking about. So the numbers inside that are not x, basically. So we know that e times f has to equal that c constant at the end of our quadratic function. And e plus f has to equal that b variable in our quadratic base function. So now let's go back and look at that example. So we have the same thing. x squared plus 2x plus 1. And when we look at it again, it goes into x plus 1 times x plus 1, like we saw before. And we can see again that the first one is our e, x plus e, and our second one is f, x plus f. And we can see how they can multiply and add to give us the various variables in our base function. Alright, now that you've got that down, let's jump in and do a little more difficult of an example. So let's take this one, x squared plus 7x plus 12. So we got we to gotta know that the first thing you always have to do is look at the factors of 12. So we start, say, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Then we look at what those add to. 1 plus 12 gives you 13, that's not 7. 2 plus 6, that gives you 8, that's not 7. 3 plus 4, that's 7. So we know those are going to be our e and f factors that we uh, talked about before. So now we can go ahead and write it down, simply with the x, and then plus our e and f factors that we just found. So that was simple enough. Alright, now let's look at another one. x squared minus 5x minus 36. Now we see that instead of positive signs, we have negatives in this case. Which doesn't really change the question too much, but I mean, it's, it's good to have an example like this, just so you know what to do in this case. So... A good thing to do would be to ignore the, the negative sign for now, as bad as that may sound. So just look at the 36, the absolute value alone. Look at the factors again. 36 times 1. We know that 36 plus 1 is 37. And now that we have negative signs, we need to look at the negative as well. 36 minus 1, so we take the difference. That gives you 35. Neither of those give you 5, so we move on to the next factor. We take half, say 18, and double the second factor, which is 1, just an easy way to find the next uh, factors of 36. Except we look at 18 plus 2, that gives you 20. That's not 5. 18 minus 2 equals 16. That's not 5. Now we look at the next one. So we go 9 times 4. 9 plus 4 is 13. That's not 5. And now we look at 9 minus 4. See, that gives you 5. So those are actually our factors. So we know that instead of it just being x plus e, or whatever the e value may be, or x plus f. This time we have x minus instead. So it's really the same idea, except for you just have a minus sign in there, except for a plus. So really not too bad. So x minus 9, and x plus 4. And that works. That's it. Thanks for watching. You are now all officially experts on product sum factoring. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And make sure to look on our channel for any new videos that might be coming up on topics that you might need help with. Thanks, and see you later.